it's uh, been a few days, but uh, there it is. And it has, it, there were a few sort of emergency, you know, rainfalls that I didn't know were coming. And uh, basically it does work under there. It does, it does charge the battery. My other little battery uh, was 100% charged over the space of a day. And I thought it was a pretty cloudy day, but that's the thing about sun. Usually there is quite a lot of sun, even, you know, direct sunlight, even on days when it does rain. So yeah, there's, there's more power out there than you might think. Let's have a look, see how it's going. This battery was 50% charged when I plugged it in an hour or so ago, hour or two. And now it's 54% charged. Goodness gracious, slow down, matey. It is a bit of a continuous juggling act though, trying to sort of use something like that to actually, you know, save any actual money or even just charge something. So at the moment, my phone is basically 100% solar charged. So is my tablet and actually, oddly enough, my electric bicycle as well. But uh, I haven't done a lot of miles on that. So it's been easy to keep that solar charged for the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, it, it's a juggling thing. You know, you're constantly sort of thinking, oh, I'm going to run out of power if I'm not careful. I need to use this battery. That one goes outside to charge, etc. And it actually reminds me a little bit of uh, what something I was reading on uh, BBC News, I think it was, about a place in Scotland called, I think it's Skoreg. Basically, you can't get there unless you go by either a boat or a five mile walk from the nearest road. It's a completely off grid community of 70 odd houses. And I think they get most of their power from wind uh, and probably some solar as well. And, you know, they have to sort of juggle. I mean, you know, some mornings they might not be able to make a cup of tea because there isn't enough wind power out there to actually boil a kettle. Living off grid from renewable only energy is definitely uh, a bit of a juggling act. A hydroelectric really helps with that because it's a much more continuous supply, a sort of a base load supply. And that's sort of, I suppose, how it works really with the country. I guess with this country, nuclear probably wouldn't be a bad idea to do the sort of the base load amount and then renewables and of one sort or another to, to fill in the gaps. But yeah, <laughs> I just thought it was quite interesting. I'd actually quite like to go visit this little place in Scotland. Um, I want to try and sort of get that organised because it, I think it'd be quite good fun. You know, do a little trip. And um, yes, anyway, so that, that thing, so far, it's a success. It does mean that I can do a bit of solar farming, you know, when the weather isn't ideal. I mean, like today, it's, it's lovely and sunny now, but you know, there are clouds. Can I find clouds? There's sort of biggish clouds that look like they might, you know, rain on me at some point. Certainly it rained last night. Right, okay. Uh, I think that's it for today's update. Yeah, I did think this Scottish place looks awesome, though. I love the idea. I'd love to be able to be, like, off-grid. Like, in this house, it's virtually impossible because you can't put down proper solar panels. There's a saddlery there. And this is, okay, this is the north-facing roof but this is obviously a southern facing side it would be perfect for solar panels but it's a listed building in a conservation area and the panels would be visible from the street so basically i've got more chance of sinking a hydrothermal power station in the back garden to be honest but that doesn't mean that it can't save money here and there like one of the great things about you know using um you know trying to survive off your homegrown solar energy is you often make more energy efficient decisions like for example if i want to watch a bit of youtube i could watch it on the great big tv but if i watch it on the tablet instead that uses a tiny fraction of the amount of power so every time i make that choice you know i save a few pennies and over months and months that adds up obviously i do use the tv sometimes but you understand the point it's sort of there's an element of rationing that ends up with making everything a lot cheaper right i'm i'm going to say goodbye now i hope you've enjoyed this little update to my vlog if you have remember to leave a like and share it and subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on this journey that i have no idea where it's going but uh, i'm definitely on a journey and i will see you tomorrow for the next episode of my vlog bye it's basically the end of the day now let's see what we've got this one has gone up 
Oh, it's not even charging at all now. It's gone up a good a couple of percent. <laughs> this one that's been out here all day, 18% it's gone up. That's about an entire tablet's charge in total, I reckon.